What's up guys? We are here in Colorado muzzleloader hunting for antelope. It is beautiful. This morning was absolutely insane. I've never seen so many antelope in my life. This is my first time hunting a pointed antelope unit. I cashed in four points for this, so I'm really excited. Like I said, this morning there were antelope running everywhere. I saw a couple good bucks. I had it 50 yards coming right at me. I could have taken not ready to tag out on the first morning. I'm going to enjoy this. It is Wednesday morning is when the, the season opens here. I'm going to hunt all the way through the weekend, so I have plenty of time. Um, I saw probably 150, 200 antelope this morning, probably three dozen bucks. Like I said, two nice ones, the rest of them were small. A lot of rut activity going on right now. We got bucks chasing does, does chasing does. It's amazing. So having a ton of fun out here watching them. Like I said, I'm gonna be a little selective looking for either, you know, a weird antelope with some character or a nice big one. So gonna just enjoy the time out here. Um, I did just get off a muzzleloader hunt in Colorado for uh, mule deer in the high country. I shot a really nice velvet five by five. If you didn't check out that video, make sure you do. I'll drop a link in the card right up here so you can go check it out. Otherwise, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Make sure you click that like button, click subscribe, and here we go. He's walking right at me. First morning, I'm gonna hold off. So from where I'm sitting right now, I can actually see six different groups of antelope that are this big. Crazy. Lots of small bucks in with the does. Seems like the bigger bucks are just kind of sitting out on the fringe. That little guy's got a lot of does. One of the better bucks I've seen so far. Hell yeah. All right, here's what I'm noticing. There is a ton of antelope here. I am doing my best not to pull the trigger on day one. I know that in these pointed units, there's not a lot of pressure. There's a ton of antelope and you just gotta sift through a bunch of, you know, mediocre ones until you find the big ones. I did find two big ones this morning. Didn't pull the trigger, proud of myself because they were pretty nice goats and definitely could have taken them. Um, uh, as I've been going around this first day, what I'm doing is I'm paying attention to the groups <clears throat> what they're looking like there's a lot of small bucks in with the does and then there's bigger bucks that are kind of bouncing around from one group to the next group to the next group i have a ton of footage of you know bigger bucks chasing off small bucks and then just going and checking the does they're definitely rutting look at them push them around i've never in my life seen antelope rut like this I mean, it's insane. They're just freaking running everywhere. Chasing each other. Bucks running bucks off, bucks chasing does. The does running does. I mean, it's freaking pandemonium out here. Yeah, a ton of fun to watch. Just a ton of action. The other thing that I noticed is there is really good topography here. It's gonna be really easy to make a stock. I actually, I wish I had a bow in my hand because plenty of good places to make stocks in here. Another important note from day one is there's a ton of space to hunt in this unit. Um, so I've only checked really one quarter of it. That's why I'm not pulling the trigger. You know, there could be better genetics or bigger bucks in a different part of the unit. So tomorrow morning and tonight, I'm gonna go check other parts. So I'm really kind of committed to not pulling the trigger until the end of morning two. I'm just to kind of get a feel for what bucks are where. Uh, definitely a lot of opportunity, not worried about filling the tag, just kind of, you know, not, not trophy hunting, um, definitely in it for the meat, but if I can get an older age class animal, awesome. Yeah. Those are the takeaways for morning one. Um, like I said, ton of action and going to go back and work during the day here, uh, and then get out this evening and check out a different part of the unit, see if I can't find anything bigger, but I definitely have pins all over this unit on where a couple of nice bucks are. So I've got places to come back to crazy rainbow tonight as the 
rain was drifting away and the sun was setting, that rainbow over the mountains was really cool. So just happy to be out here, man, doing what I love. Really looking forward to tomorrow morning. Again, tomorrow morning I'm going to a completely new area. Uh, I saw a ton of antelope in the area I'm in this morning. They're not going anywhere. Um, I'm just crossing my fingers that the big ones don't get shot by the other hunters, but that's the risky run hunting public land, I guess. Hi, right, morning number two. This is why scouting is really nice, or why not being able to scout really sucks. So I came in blind, never been in this unit before. As the sun came up on the first morning, I had two pieces I wanted to check out. Yesterday morning, I checked out the main piece. Everything went great. I was in the spot I wanted to be this morning as the sun was coming up, the second area, and it's way more mountainous than it looked on the map. Uh, there's, you can't access BLM land, it's, it's uh, landlocked by private, I'm running into shut gates, no trespassing signs, and now it's prime time scouting, or prime time you know, antelope activity, and I am just flying around like a chicken with my head cut off because I just don't know the area. So basically, so far I've wasted my morning um, and I'm going to work my way back towards the uh, area I was yesterday. Another wide buck. <clears throat> In this area, it seems like there's a little bit different genetics. They're not as tall, but they're pretty wide. This guy's at 50 yards right now. All right, so I was talking yesterday about how the mature bucks don't really sit in with the does. They sit downwind of them. This is a perfect example. I'm going to show you right here. So I just found in the spotting scopes right here in the corner. All his does are right here in this bowl. He's downwind, just smelling, waiting to see when one comes in. Down here is an example of the opposite. So right there is a group of does, and there's a little buck in with them, just chasing them around, running everywhere. So mature buck separate from his does, young buck running does everywhere. Pretty cool. Check out this old homestead I found, pretty cool. You know, it's really cool when you're out west exploring around you find stuff like this and you can't help but think, you know, what life might have been like for the people that lived here. And I, you know, I've ran into a lot of these old buildings. I've found cabins up in the mountains that I've actually stayed in, set up pitching a tent. And These guys, I think, were living high in the hog because Two-story buildings back in the day, pretty rare. You can see they had that rock foundation with a little window and a door in the bottom. And then they had the, the upper level, so. This is uh, quite the homestead, pretty cool. Like I said, when you're exploring out west, you find a, a lot of this stuff, and it's, it's fun to think about what life might have been like for these people, so. There you go, there's their digs behind me. Kinda cool. That'd be a fun little shot right there. He is 105 yards. Nice goat too. All right, it's the second evening in the hunt. I'm about to head out. I'm actually gonna load the muzzle loader here. I, I, to stop myself from shooting too early, didn't even load it. So uh, two mornings and the evening I've been out there scouting and taking footage and talking to you guys. I never even had a loaded muzzle loader. And I did that again just to make sure that I saw all the country and saw all the goats before uh, I decided to chase after one. So I'm going to load this bad boy up and we're going to head out there. All right, so I just got out here for the evening hunt. I uh, just got done with work for the day. And uh, the very first spot I check is the third biggest antelope we've seen so far. And he's bedded in the exact same spot that he was yesterday, which is wild. Check this out. He's in a really killable spot right now. He is bedded kind of below this hill. So all I'd have to do is go up on this hill right here, 
walk that way towards him and I'd come out right on top of him. It would be an easy, you know, 70 yard shot. So right now I'm having the old internal debate on whether or not uh, I go sneak up over the top of him and shoot him or... All right, it's gonna be a little bit until the other antelope get up and start moving around. So I'm gonna go have a little fun with this guy. I'm gonna go make a stalk up onto this hill, see how close I can get. Let's go. Man, that was awesome. When I got up here on top of the hill, he was laid down at 50 yards. I had him dead to rights. I got the camera set up, laying here thinking, man, this is really tempting. <laughs> That's the third biggest buck I've seen so far. Just not ready to pull the trigger yet. He looks really good. Yeah, he's pretty good. Deep cutters. Wide. He could be the biggest goat I've seen so far. <sighs> to shoot him or not to shoot him, I have 30 more minutes left to shooting lane. So I just tried to make a play on those goats. And I'm kind of running out of light here. So, rather than, I mean, I still have 15 minutes left of shooting light, but I'm just worried that by the time I get to him, you guys won't be able to see it on camera. So, I'm going to pull out and come back in here tomorrow morning and chase this same, same goat tomorrow morning. So, stay tuned. All right, morning number three. I went to go check where that big buck was that I left last night. He wasn't there. I just found another one where I was seeing some other big bucks. He's a, definitely a, one of the bigger ones I've seen. Um, for the life of me, I can't figure out why I don't want to just shoot one of these things. <laughs> I've kind of accepted that there, you know, there's eight or nine bucks that are all about the same size. I'm really splitting hairs and picking between them. I think I'm just having way too much fun watching them. Not ready for the hunt to be over, so. I think this morning I'm going to try some crazy stuff with a decoy, see if I can't get him to charge me, and then, uh, then it might finally be time to pull the trigger. I just found another buck just down from that last one. They're all exactly the same size. Um, I think this one's with a bunch of does though, so I'm going to try to play the decoy trick and see if I can't get him to charge me. Let's go. That's pretty cool. I was walking up to get over the hill on top of the does, and that buck must have heard me here. I don't think he smelled me, the wind was good. I think he was just coming back to check on the truck. He came up over the hill, I had the decoy up, you know, frontal at 60 yards, but he looked at it for a while and ran back over to the does. He never, never wanted to charge it, so there's another buck just on the other side of this hill. I'm going to go get on top of him and see. So that was the antelope from this morning. I used this two track right here and I just belly crawled along the two track. Here's that grass. I got up on top of the grass right behind me here, set my pack up sideways. 
Got in the pack with the muzzy, ranged him, he was at 107 yards. Staring right at me, turn broadside, I'm looking at him through the crosshairs. Really at this point I'm just practicing, seeing what I can get away with. Just kind of getting some more experience at the antelope, you know, it never hurts, but he was a nice goat. I'd be happy to, to shoot him on the last day, but I still have three days left of hunting, so overall, great stock. I did get a cactus in my knee. That sucked. <laughs> but that's hunting the plains, man. <laughs> so I refound that buck I found at daylight. Um, I could have shot him at daybreak. He was on the public. Um, but I went down to go, you know, screw around with the decoy. Came back to check on him. Now he's on the private side of the fence. The private side's the right side. The public side's the left side. And he's chasing this doe up and down. He's all fired up, scratching. And he's got her cornered in she can't figure out how to cross the fence but i think if i get up there with a decoy now and throw it up he's gonna come run me over and he's a nice buck so i'm gonna keep my eyes on him here she's stuck in the corner He's got her herded in.
<clears throat> that was freaking awesome. I got him set up the camera and everything. That was amazing. What a shot. I refound the big buck from last night. Thank goodness I didn't shoot that one this morning. <clears throat> this is the biggest buck that I've seen in three days after looking at probably 300 antelope. <laughs> probably six dozen bucks. He just has a little more mass than all the other ones. And he's down right there. So I had my fun with that decoy, but the situation here was perfect for a normal stock. You can see this coolie behind me right here. I was able to just kind of work my way all the way up it. And I came up on the ridge here. And when I popped up, I couldn't see him anywhere up there. I was like, where the heck did he go? He disappeared. Well, as I was coming up the coolie, he was crossing it. So when I came up, he was in the bottom. I couldn't see him. Then he came up the other side, saw him. I took the time to get the camera set up. He was wheezing at me. I was like, oh no, he's going to run off before I can get time to get a shot. Got the camera set up, zoomed in, got on top of my pack, made a good shot. I never even ranged him. I didn't have to. I, I knew he was inside 100. I'm going to guess it was about 75, 80 yards. We're walking up on him right now. He's There he is. Heck yeah. Oh, that's a goat. He's perfect, man. Wow. Oh, look at all the... Oh my god. That is so cool. I gotta show you this. He's missing all the hair on his neck from fighting. Check out the wounds, man. All scabbed up from fighting. Crazy big old hole in his neck, all the way back to his shoulder, hind quarter, all the way back to his butt. He's got wounds. That's wild. <laughs> what a warrior. Oh, yeah. He's got scabs on his face. Man. He's perfect. No broken tips, good mass at the base, good mass up, good deep forks, he's long. I'll put tape to him and let you know <clears throat> what his length is, but I'm guessing 15 at least. <laughs> Perfect shot too, I'm going to roll him over. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed what you saw, what a hunt. Man, I loved watching these things rut, chase each other around, chase does around. It was, I'm really grateful I waited the full three days before I pulled the trigger. Uh, I got to see a ton, I got to learn a ton, and I got one of the biggest bucks I've seen, you know, after looking at hundreds of animals and probably six or seven different bucks. Uh, so really fortunate it all came together, I was able to get it all on film. Um, if you liked what you saw and you appreciate the self-filming game, make sure you click that like button. And make sure you click subscribe. I have tons of hunts left for this year. I have another antelope hunt that I'm doing with the pistol up in Wyoming. That, with that same pistol, I'm hunting elk here in Colorado. I've got mule deer in Nebraska and whitetail in Wisconsin and all the normal hunts I do. So tons left. Click the subscribe button so you get uh, prompted when I post those videos up. And other than that, thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.